happy weekend. Um, today I'm just going to give a quick walk around of the garden. Another garden update. Um, it will be kind of a long video. But let's get to this it. This is my spring bulb bed. Um, first year for it. And so far my tulips have not been chewed on by the deer, which is quite amazing. The daffodils are doing well. I had a few more blooms, but I cut them yesterday. I was able to save some of these from the slugs. And I'm not sure what they are. I think they are alliums, but now I'm not sure. Now they're starting to look like daffodils again. But I don't know. We'll find out. I have a feeling the deer will come and get them once they bloom, the tulips. And they're getting close. I'm hoping next year that fills out a bit more. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it so far this year. Um, yesterday, I got chicken wire and wrapped it around my little address post here. And I've got a mailbox garden seed kit that I'll be planting under it. And it's got a couple of vining plants. So that's what the chicken wire's for, so it can grow up. Um, I put the chicken wire on in a way that I can take it off easily. Just got it on hooks. So I can, I can take it off when the plants die back, because they're just annuals that are gonna grow up it. And um, I can take it off, I can clean it off, I can paint the pole again if I need to, and then I can put it right back up when it's ready again. My whew, crocus ring has quit blooming mostly for this season. You can see some dead flowers still in there. Um, I've got to come out here a little later when it warms up and pull all of these things out. All of these things are maple tree seeds and I foolishly used maple tree leaves as mulch for this area and obviously there were plenty of seeds in it. So now, now I get to come out here and pull every last one of these before they become trees and are difficult to pull out. Um, this is a bleeding heart coming back from last year. Got another bleeding heart coming up here. Um, and there's a couple flowers still holding on back here. This place bloomed the last because it has the least amount of sun. Um, I'm probably gonna add zinnia seeds to this area for the summer, um, but I'm not sure because the bleeding hearts are in there and they'll be covered up by the zinnias. So I may just put the zinnias in clumps away from the bleeding hearts. Um, the bleeding hearts got eaten by the deer last year, like down to their stumps. So um, I have a feeling that'll happen again this year. And maybe if I kind of hide them with the zinnias, they won't be as tempted to get them. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try. My camellia roses are blooming. Um, the plants aren't looking the best. I'm actually treating them for rust fungus just in case because of these spots. Um, I'm not sure if it's rust or if it's just sunburn because these do get a lot of afternoon sun. Um, but they're blooming, so they can't be that unhappy. They're so pretty. Oh, they're just pretty, pretty little plants. I just need to get the green help happy and healthy. And I'm hoping it's just sunburn. And when these trees around them fill in, that um, they stop getting so much sun and are a bit happier. My day lilies are still growing away. Um, I still need to mulch them because that grass is getting tall. <laughs> And uh, we're either gonna have to weed eat between them or get mulch down very, very soon to stop their growth. I need mulch. I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. You know, if I have to weed whack between the daylilies, I'll do it. And then I'll put newspaper down and mulch it and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. This is my Ceanothus Victoria Lilac. And it is starting to get little blooms, but it probably won't bloom till summertime. I actually planted it last year, sometime in June, I believe, maybe a little bit later than that. And it was, uh, it was blooming when I planted it. 
So it's a summer bloomer. Now we're in the backyard. Here is my little fallen wood trellis that I made for this climbing rose. And it is growing, y'all. Look at that. Look at all that. Now that all happened after I gave it an Epsom salt soak, like my mama said to do. There is some debate in the gardening world about using Epsom salt in your garden. You got the people who are all master gardener and science says this and it's been proven. That's the no Epsom salt side. Then you've got the my mama said and I've been doing this for years and it's always worked for me and look at my gardens and tell me this ain't working side. And those are the folks that use Epsom salt. I read the information about it. I read both sides. Um, and what it came down to seemed to be that Epsom salts, this is the science side, Epsom salts don't provide enough nutrients to make a difference anyhow, why do it? So if that was their con, I was like, well shoot, sounds like it won't hurt it if I do do it, right? So I did it and it seems to be working. <laughs> I mean, I did put compost under them as well when I planted them, but, um, you know, if it's not going to hurt, I don't see the reason in not trying it. And it's not like Epsom salts are expensive. So I did it and I'm enjoying the results. Whatever. Here's my perennial bed. It does seem I have lost most of them. Um, I have some Dianthus here who I don't, I don't believe they're coming back. <laughs> uh, my time is doing fine. There's one, hmm, I cannot believe I forgot what this plant is called. But anyhow, there's one of them, there used to be two. The second one has not come back. Um, there were also foxgloves behind these and they have not come back. So it looks like my time made it. One of these guys, delphinium, they're delphiniums. And my two Shasta daisies. But it looks like I'll need to get out of there, kitty. Get out of there. It looks like I'm gonna have to replace some perennials in here. And uh, that happened because I didn't mulch this perennial bed. And you know, this winter was very cold and I didn't mulch it so they had no protection and they died. That's what happens. These are my brassicas um, and a lavender plant in there. I just put these little Brussels sprouts out yesterday. <laughs> Um, the broccoli, which is hidden, has been having some uh, slug issues that I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to deal with. So I've just got them covered um, for now. The worst affected uh, ones. I've got eggshells all over this bed, but I guess it's not enough or my slugs don't care because they're still coming in. Um, I've also been using this because I thought my issue was cabbage moths because that's what my problem was last year. But this year it's slugs. I'm trying not to use the slug bait pellets because everyone says they, they form mold and I don't, I don't want mold all over my beds. It may not hurt it, but it's not pretty, so I don't want it. So I'm just gonna keep coming out here every night and picking them off. And if it starts becoming a real problem, I, I'll use the pellets, but trying not to. I planted peas a little while ago, maybe a week ago or so, and they're all coming up. Those are sugar snap peas. They're so good. This is a little gooseberry plant that my mother-in-law gave me. I just put it in the ground about a week ago as well, and it's so happy. I'm happy to have it. Um, the gooseberries are very small berries, but I hear they're very, you know, nice for snacking. And apparently the birds really love them too. And I don't, I don't mind having birds in here because the birds will eat the slugs. <laughs> so I want them in here. So that's good. I hope they do come in and eat some of my berries. My garlic, which I thought was dead and was not gonna do anything, has really enjoyed the warmer temperatures and has just kicked off. My strawberries are continuing to grow behind me there very happily. Um, I'm excited about them. That's going to be such a cool patch right there. I still haven't put anything in the middle. And I don't know what I'm going to put in the middle, but I'm going to put something there. I just don't know yet. I may end up planting more peas 
right at each corner there and just train the pea plants up those um, poles because why not? Peas are good. I do have a couple more things out here. I transplanted a plum tree that my mother-in-law also gave me. It's down here. Let's go check it out. On the way to the plum tree, I forgot that I also seeded my wildflowers. Um, I didn't do a large, as large an area as I wanted because um, there's a lot of area to clear and I was being lazy. So I figured I'd do a small area this year and if I like it, I'll come out here and, and add to it next year and I'll just keep doing that. I'll just add every year. So you can see here, I've got thistles. The thistles grow here. Um, they grew here last year. They're already coming back. Ow! Ow! They're already coming back this year. Ow, ow, ow! Ugh! And they have large tap roots, so they're really hard to completely get out of there. You gotta rip them out. I'm gonna try to rip them out this year, right around the time they're flowering. That way the pollinators can get to them, but they won't go to seed. So. That's what I'm planning on ripping them out. But anyhow, all these little bitty dots of green you see are wildflower seeds that I spread. And you can tell that's them because they kind of gathered in areas <laughs> because I didn't use sand like I was going to. I just, just spread the seed. Um, so I we'll did uh, spread it a little early just because I was getting impatient. And we'll see what happens. Woo! <laughs> The coyotes dig holes here, going after the voles, and you don't always see the holes, <laughs> so that's fun. All right, we're down here. Isn't that tree pretty? That's my neighbor's, I guess it's a cherry tree. I don't know, but it's beautiful. Um, it's my apple tree. Last year I pruned it a bit to make it more like an espalier apple tree. Um, the top is still a hot mess, but I did pretty well on the bottom part. I was very... Uh, surprised when the top part didn't break at all from the snow but it does look like I have a branch or two broken up there now that I'm really looking at it those two look like they may be broken um, in the fall I'll deal with that I'm not gonna deal with it this, this year this is my second apple tree I believe it's the same variety as the one next to it at least the apples being put off are and I'm also trying to espalier this one I still need to do some work on the top but this one's coming along pretty well and then too. here is my new plum tree this is a Klamath plum, um, also known as an Oregon plum. It does need a pollinating partner. Um, so I'll have to get one of those. I was hoping my neighbors had a plum tree. And I actually contacted them and asked, hey, is that a plum tree over in y'all's yard? And they said, yeah, it is. However, it's dead. Apparently this past winter killed it split it or something I don't I don't remember so there's no longer a pollinator next door I'll have to get one but I'll just let this guy live and get settled in this year and I'll get a pollinator for him next year it's my neighbor's chicken chicken she thinks I have earthworms for her like I did when I was planting this tree no earthworms today girly sorry if anyone wants to send me treats for the chicken you sure can. And I'll take myself giving them to her. Yeah. There's my mighty vole hunter. Come on, kitty. Let's go leave the, the chicken alone. Come on. Finally outside here, I planted a very, very sad little lavender start from Walmart. Um, it's a huge bag with a stick sticking out the top. I assumed the root system was the entire bag, but I was wrong. <laughs> Only about this much of the plant was actually in the bag, and it had a very small root sticking out of it, like, so small. <laughs> but I planted it anyhow, because why not? And it has growth on it. When I planted it, it only had growth on the very tip, and the side shoot has started now. It's a very tiny start. <laughs> so tiny, but it'll grow. And it's right here next to my bird feeding area. So they'll have a bush to kind of hide in. There'll be butterflies. It's near my window where I sleep at night. So I'll get to smell it in the summer evenings. 
Maybe not this year, but in a couple of years. So I'm excited about that. Just stop it. <laughs> I hate blackberry shoes. So, that's outside for now. Um, my husband's probably going to have to mow the yard in a week or two. Because it's starting to grow. We also have about a million. And that's probably a small number. I'm probably underestimating. <laughs> Seriously, we have about a million maple tree seedlings in the yard. So he'll have to cut just to, uh, to kill them. Otherwise our yard will be a forest in a few years, which should kind of be cool, but that's not what we're going for. All right, head back around front to go in the front door because I locked the back door. These are my little front porch planters. Oh, here's my barberry. It's starting to, uh, to leaf out. I love these barberries. And there's my little planters. These don't get as much sun as that tree ring does, so they, they bloomed a lot later. The crocuses in here did. I've got some little kefir lilies in here, and hopefully they'll come back. Um, and then just some pansies. Also in there are some oriental lilies. <laughs> Hummingbirds. <laughs> um, oriental lilies, and they're actually coming back. So that's pretty cool. And they'll, they, they're summertime bloomers, late summer, so I won't see them for a while got this little guy. He was on super sale at Walmart, so I bought him because I needed something for this table. And I was there getting chicken wire anyhow. But he has to live on the porch because if I put him in the yard, the deer will eat him. So he'll stay here with me. Um, right here, this is a cutting from my mother-in-law's white for Cynthia. I'm not sure what it is actually but she asked me to prune it. I pruned it and I took a cutting and I'm gonna grow it in my yard. And then this is a cutting from an Indian plum that was growing on the side of the road. Most of my seedlings are actually ready to go outside, but it's not warm enough outside for them yet. So I had to repot them all into larger pots and um, you saw my little bitty Brussels sprouts outside. I went ahead and put them out because they were so leggy. I buried over half of the stalk on all of them. Um, and I went ahead and put them outside because they can survive this cold. So I figured if I buried most of them, the legginess would be solved and maybe being outside will give them enough light to grow properly. But this stuff here is ready to go outside, but it's too cold. These are all zinnias. Just transplanted them yesterday, so they're, they're still kind of upset from that. They're all zinnias, and these are the ones that I was thinking about putting around that ring tree outside, the ring bed. Zinnias are like foolproof, so even if I don't get them transplanted outside successfully, I'll just put down more seeds and they'll grow. I just wanted some kind of early, so I started them inside. So we'll see. And in this window, we have two passion flower vines starting. A wisteria that I started last fall and kept inside over the winter. Another wisteria started from seed. There was a wisteria in that, but I don't think it's doing anything. Another passion flower vine. And that is called thum Thumber, I don't remember, but it was like Thumberlina or something. I'll put it on the video here on the bottom for you to read. That last vine is from the mailbox garden kit that I was gonna put around the address marker outside. And it looks like that. Cause you can see that I'm sure. Um, but the plant name is Thumbergia Alata, and I probably butchered that, so let me, let me show it to you. Thumberlina Alata. 
And I've also got some red trumpet vine that'll be growing up, some more zinnias, and then I believe those are nasturiums. So all that will be going at that mailbox. It's not a mailbox, the address planter. I have started hardening off both the wisteria vine that's been inside all winter long and the zinnias because I'm going to try to put them out just a little bit earlier than I should and I'd like to go ahead and get them hardened off so I can put them. Um, the zinnias will probably harden off for about two weeks and I'm just going to do that by putting them outside during the day and bringing them in at night and then the last few days I'll leave them out all night and see what happens and if they survive fine outside at night I'll probably go ahead and plant them if they don't, I'll wait till a little bit closer to May. But right now that's the plan. I'm gonna harden them off for two weeks. Next week I'll start leaving them out at night and then I'm gonna try to plant them. So for the rest of the video, I'm just gonna get comfortable on my front porch here and wait for a hummingbird to come and maybe get a slow-mo video for y'all of this, my hummingbirds. I have many more now. I did just have Anna's, but all the migrators are coming back now, and they're passing through and eating at my feeders. And I have Rufus's, I have Ruby Throated, and my one loyal Anna girl is still hanging around. Um, so I'm gonna sit here quietly and hope they think I'm not a threat. <laughs> the new ones aren't used to me, so they don't come close. Um, but I'll see if I can get y'all some video of the hummingbird for the end of this. And I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Thanks for watching.